Type design. It's more about the idea that is embedded in the in the typeface or the type treatment or the type movement actually make uh, the concept stronger and actually brings it to life. You could really feel the passion, and there was so much attention to detail. I felt that was um, both inspiring and also just something for the community at large to learn from. Of course, the execution was. Um, Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us on this DNAD jury discussion, where we'll hear insights from the typography and type design panels from this year's DNAD Awards. My name is Eliza Williams, and I'm the editor of Creative Review Magazine, and I'm going to be leading this conversation where we'll discuss some of the winning work and also have a wider chat about typography and type design today. To start with, I thought we could just have a brief conversation about how the judging was this year. Then we're going to go on to talk about some of the work that you have chosen that are winners from this year's awards. But first up, Samar, could you just talk about your experience of judging uh, and maybe you could just explain what the judges were looking at in the typography panel? Uh, hi, everybody. Um, this is the second time uh, I judge uh, DNAD. Last year I did writing for design. This year is the typography. Very much enjoyed this experience. Um, there were a lot of entries this year, about 153 entries in total, so quite a lot to go through. Um, and then about like we had to kind of give everything justice, go through all uh, the, the documentation, looking at the case studies, and then from the shortlist, start the discussion. Um, the jury was a mixed bag of people who do type design, who do uh, creative direction, who work with typography. So it was really interesting to hear different points of view come into the conversation. Um, and, and it kind of balanced it out as well in terms of like what people look for in typography. Um, typography is not necessarily a, a type a type focused in the sense that it's the type design. It's more about what is type doing to the project? What is it bringing into the brand itself? Or how does the, the idea that is embedded in the, in the typeface or the type treatment or the type movement actually make uh, the concept stronger and actually brings it to life. And uh, this is sort of what we were looking for. Obviously it's the same kit, it's the same criteria that we judge in terms of it being incredibly well-crafted, uh, being inspirational, being new in a way. Also we were looking for things that we haven't seen before. That's always the case. I think in the city, like projects that are doing things that are new and, um, and yeah, that's kind of pretty much it. Um, it was wonderful to be part of this experience. Oh, very good. That was a great description. Thank you. Um, Ulrika, both you and Pooja are on the same panel, but I'll ask you if that's OK, just to just to talk about what the diff the different kind of cri criteria and what you're looking at at the work in the type design panel. Yeah, we were, we were like um, eight or nine um people mm -hmm. in the jury and uh, we had a lot of people from different backgrounds and uh, all type designers but also um, with different um, skills uh, when it comes to different white writing systems and different um, yeah different uh, uh, what's it called um, it's just writing systems yeah uh, scripts different scripts yes um, and um, yeah we were also looking um, for um, new trends but also um, we um, well of course um, having a very, very sharp eye on well executed typefaces that have like um, professional outlines and um, a huge character set. Um, so that is not only a set of A to Z and then that's it, but um, uh, a character set that is um, usable for um, all kinds of use cases. Um, but yeah, we were also having a look into innovative concepts and um, something new that we haven't seen before was also um, awarded, of course. And it was a very, very uh, insightful discussion also. So I also learned a lot during that uh, jury days. It was for, um, yeah, insightful. Yes, that's always the, the best thing I think of juries is the, the work you see and then all the insights you get from other people which it's harder to to do these days um were there were there big debates was were people broadly in agreement with with the winners yeah i think we were um kind of on the same track and if 
some people had like um, different ideas or they thought, thought, oh, maybe we should bring that up again because um, somehow it wasn't in again. Then we had a very good discussion and then we understood why the other ones wouldn't think this one is a winner or why maybe it is actually a winner. And so there were a lot of um, um, discussions and we could um, all like agree at the end. So it was not like fights. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That sounds a good jury all round. Um, maybe we could move then to talk a bit about the actual work that was picked. Um, all three of you have kindly picked one example of work from your from your panels that you'd like to talk about. Um, Pooja, perhaps I'll come to you now for this one. Would you do you want to uh, just explain which piece of work you've picked and and I presume it is a winner. So uh, maybe you could just explain why that was chosen as a winner and and. Uh, and why it stands out for you personally. Mm -hmm. So uh, the project that I picked to speak about today is a multi-script variable font family called Anik, uh, which was uh, submitted, I think, by a group of designers from India, which is also where I'm from. Um, so Anik, in, like, Anik is a Hindi word, and it largely it means many. And that kind of uh, encapsulates what the project was about really well as well, because it was a lot um, variable font family which supported um, about a dozen different scripts like Latin and then a range of Indian scripts as well and I think one of the reasons that we definitely found this project to be very inspiring was also just the sheer scale and scope of the project uh, you know the attempt to provide a well-crafted tool for so many underserved scripts in one typeface was, uh, you know, extremely commendable. Um, for me personally, what was also really great about this project was that it showed how type design doesn't have to be a solitary exercise because this project was put together by, you know, a large team of designers, each with their own expertise, with their own strengths, and each with, you know, knowledge of different writing systems. And they all came together to produce something uh, that worked for a number of regions and people. Uh, so at least I felt that was um, both inspiring and also just something for the community at large to learn from, uh, to kind of see how large scale projects can be done in a way which is fair, which is representative, which actually leads to uh, you know, results that are to begin with usable, which often doesn't happen with underrepresented underrepresented scripts, but also just, you know, really um, well executed and well done. Um, all of that said, I have to say that even as a jury of about eight or nine people, I think we, we struggled with being able to judge something of this scale, right, Ulrika? Because, I mean, uh, the typeface just covered so many writing scripts that, I mean, even between us, we could barely really, uh, you know, judge with confidence only a few of them. And that also to me is really interesting because uh, it tells us what a huge challenge it can be to assemble a jury that's able to judge, judge the projects that are sent in, mm. right? And it's such a kind of, it's such a chicken and egg sort of situation, right? Because you can't decide a jury after the, entries come in and in some way which entries come in can sometimes be dependent on who the jury members are and I think we found that to be an interesting thing to discuss throughout because we had various uh, writing systems represented and there was this constant back and forth of you know us requiring to depend on maybe just one or two of our fellow jury members to be able to give the rest of us uh, inputs into why a project might be uh, worthy of, you know, an award and so forth, or why a project pr probably wasn't up to, you know, quite that standard. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that was that was a bit of a challenge in judging this entry, but I think it speaks to how good it looked even to those who did not read those scripts. The fact that this one kind of, you know, made it through pretty much, uh, yeah, through the top. Yes, that's really it's really interesting what you were saying about because. Obviously, with uh, awards, there's often a criticism leveled at all awards, really, that you get certain pieces of work which will become the ones that everyone feels comfortable about awarding. So you then see them everywhere. 
-hmm. and then that becomes a, can make it slightly an exclusive world. Um, I mean, do you, did you, did you have any conversations about how this could be managed going forward, or do you think you say it's a chicken and egg situation? Do you think it's something that might just over time, certainly with say underrepresented typefaces, that maybe that's something that will um, they'll be more represented so it will be easier over time would, would that just will it be that kind of evolution that will solve it i think like as we have more experts in various writing systems designing typefaces chances are juries will have more of those people on them and as a result there will be people on a jury that can judge you know the projects uh, much better but but you're right about people feeling comfortable about certain projects i think it's kind of like I think when we were also judging, I think I think actually, Ulrike, it was you who said that about the project that you were actually going to speak about is that none of us realized that this project made its way through so many of the stages, right? Yeah, yeah. It just seemed like a project that all of us felt quite comfortable with uh, being able to judge. So we didn't actually have any discussions about it right till the last few stages, whereas uh, the projects that we have in scripts from India or like the Arabic typefaces, those we ended up having a lot more conversation about because we didn't necessarily feel capable enough to judge them. And I think that was a really, really interesting observation that you made because, I mean, it kind of works both ways, right? Because it, after the jury, it made me wonder if there was another project in there somewhere, which we you know, because we felt so comfortable about it, we didn't end up spending as much time discussing because, I mean, the discussions always brought up little facets that one person noticed and another did not, but for projects we all felt comfortable with, we just didn't have, I mean, the size of the discussion was smaller. So I think the whole being comfortable with projects thing can also be a double-edged sword perhaps because they may not get the same amount of time in discussion as others which are more complex to judge. Yeah, completely. That makes sense. Um, just before we move on to to Ulrika, because it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on this project as well as the one you're going to talk about. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you said earlier on about it um, being a project that was multiple designers and obviously quite a lot of research, it sounds like, with, um, with communities about getting it right. It, it, how unusual is that in your experience? Like, do, do type designers more commonly work alone or in very small teams? I mean, is it unusual to have a project where a lot of people would come together in this way? Um, I think it's unusual to have projects which cover these many writing systems. Yeah. Um, I think that was very unusual about this project. And also, um, though not so much now, but there was, I mean, what is special about this project also is that, um, you know, pretty much all scripts got served by designers who use them rather than, you know, uh, foreign designers designing in them. So it had that aspect to it. So I think that also definitely made it uh, a more unique project than others in my eyes. Yeah, yes. so, um, it was not also about uh, um, perfect letter shapes and um, beautiful uh, Bezier curves, but um, I think that what made, made it totally um, worth to get an award was also the fact that they put so much effort in mm -hmm. making or like making all these different um, scripts available and work together also yeah yes and I think so that's, yeah and I, go on no no that's that's also the award no it's not only about yeah. the typeface itself but the idea behind that and I think like once Ulrika talks about the project that she's picked as well I think you'll notice that with the type design jury we ended up picking projects which in some ways we felt would really facilitate communication and connection. I think that ultimately when you look at the winners is an underlying theme that we didn't necessarily set out with, but as we discussed projects, it just sort of emerged. I think what felt important to all of us was whether these typefaces were tools which would really um, help communication in a way that it hasn't been done before. Yeah, and I hope others see it that way too. Yeah, that's really interesting. So that in a way the practical use of of the typefaces was as important as as the beauty or the aesthetics as well. That, I think that is that's very interesting to bring to bring to the focus. I think um, maybe we should go to you, Aurika, to talk about the one you picked as, from the same same panel. Yeah, so it was also from the type design panel, and um, the piece that I picked was SF symbols. So it's um, 
um, symbol font as the um, name implies and it's for the user interface for Apple products. Um, and the interesting thing here was that at the beginning, everyone, or at least I can say for my part, but I think there were also other people that thought like, yeah, well, it's symbols. It's not a real typeface. So it's not like beautiful letter shapes, um, but just symbols. So that was the first thing. But it was so interesting to see that the more we looked at it and the, the wider it passed through the different um, categories, um, um, the more we like realized, wow, this is a really a huge amount of work. And this is also having such an impact um, in the um, user interface um, design um, industry that, um, yeah, we, we definitely fell kind of in love with this project. And um, yeah, it was interesting to see that um, the more we looked at it, the more we found uh, yet another detail that was like, wow, they even did that. That's impressive. So um, it's not only that, um, um, <clears throat> of course, the execution was, um, Excellent. So the um, and, and the the busy curves were smooth and crisp and sharp and um, super beautiful to look at. But it was also the amount of work that they put in, like having all the different color palettes and make it uh, in different sizes for different screen sizes and um, all that alone is already a huge amount of work that uh, should be awarded. But what we really liked most about this project was that they um, <clears throat> thought about um, localization in such a way that you could really feel the passion and there was so much attention to detail because um, especially like on this uh, one slide where you see this, um, when you send a message and you can um, make a haha like that you would use in English. Um, they also localize that for many, many other di uh, different languages. And it not, it's not just translated, but there is so much, there was probably so much brain work happening and so much probably also conversations with, uh, with the real communities. So it was super authentic. And we had also two jury members, um, Japanese ju jury members who were so delighted to see the, um, the Japanese uh, well, it was not translation, but they actually used a certain character. I can't recall um, what it was standing for. I think it was a um, Japanese character uh, that uh, was also used for smiling or um, laughing. And it was, um, I mean, it was super intelligent. It was not just purely translated. And that made for us this work so special. And especially also because, um, I mean, Apple is a big player. And we know now that they are kind of setting the standards. and well, the others now have to follow, which is a good sign to, to make this um, interface more inclusive and um, yeah, to speak to more people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's interesting. In a way, the two examples that you've each picked, there's a, a link perhaps, I mean, totally different projects obviously, but there's a link in that depth of, of uh, connection to the communities and that, um, I suppose, respect to doing doing it really with a lot of depth and sort of doing it properly, perhaps, rather than this, you've mentioned about, would it be more typical that in the past, perhaps people lent on translations more commonly in these situations and, and didn't perhaps do that local research quite as much? Yeah. I mean, it also shows that they really care, I think, because I th I'm pretty sure they will also sell their product uh, without all this localization, but it really gives like the sign, hey, we really care how you communicate in your uh, country with your um, people. So um, let's, I think, to, 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 look, to do that extra step or to go that extra mile um, is something that should be awarded, of course. Yeah, and very, and like you say, a, a a really strong signal that this is the level that everyone should be working at now. Oh, well, thank you both. Um, is there anything else before we just move to Samar's panel? Uh, is there anything else from your panel? Any other moments that you'd like to re reflect on now or, or uh, should we move to Samar? Well, I really enjoyed that we had so many uh, entries with uh, so many different scripts. I learned mm -hmm. so much. Uh, uh, I mean, scripts that I haven't had a look at before, like Bengali. I I had no idea and now I really know how to read it and that's not the case of course but um, 
like we had these super nerdy um, uh, conversations with our experts and uh, this was super interesting and it was also nice to see I think in like 10 years ago there was barely an entry that was not Latin and now we actually at the end we had like you we were facing the um, the issue that or well, not an issue but uh, we, we, we barely had Latin entries um, that or rather uh, we didn't want to award Latin entries we found yeah. more interesting projects in yeah. like other scripts and which is so great because it also tells us how how much work and exciting work is happening elsewhere yeah and it kind of widens I mean it, it definitely widened our perspective but we hope that when people look at the annual when people look at the awardees list you know they kind of broaden their horizons a little bit too and look at more than just what they're used to when they're looking for great examples of type yeah. design work yeah so there's a change happening I think yeah. Mm -hmm. So Samar, we'll move to you now. Your jury, as you were saying, was looking more at the use of typography for, for uh, commercial projects, for advertising and design projects. Um, so do you want to talk about the, the one winner that you've picked to discuss here? Yes, definitely. Uh, first of all, it was really lovely to hear you uh, ladies talk about what what discussions and conversations you had. Also, I think wanting to mention that on our jury, it was there were about 13 languages covered between all of us. So DNAD did go above and beyond to make the jury cover as many scripts as possible. And we did have a lot of entries that were uh, scripts that I'm not familiar with. So I work uh, with Arabic and English, but also I have people, members on my team that speak Chinese. So I was kind of, you know, trying to understand the entries that I couldn't really understand. But, but I under, but also it's kind of, you know, perfectly clear. You can only judge so many things that you can read and actually really get through them. So, um, for for my choice for this entry, I picked a project by Sinead uh, Odoyer. It's actually a Latin project, although we did have a lot of entries that were a uh, different script. Um, but what I really like about this project is how well, how coherent it is and how it works so well and how without the type, the, the typography, the brand wouldn't be the same. So her work is about the difference in the female body and how um, kind of every woman is different, the variety, the beauty, but also like she calls it, uh, uh, like she ends her video on saying uh, the, the kindness, the care, the darkness, uh, all of this kind of exists in how women look at, our, at, at themselves. And in the typeface, like the, the forms uh, shift and morph a little bit. So you get these counters that are a little bit odd um, and, and it drives the whole brand. It drives it from, from the word mark to, uh, to the actual uh, copy uh, on the posters. And it's so coherent yet so simple. So um, one thing that comes into our judging as well, like is sometimes you see these projects that are, have a, a huge budget to execute and then projects that are kind of slightly smaller. And this is the way it is, right? Everybody applies. And you kind of have to look at what you see, which is the case study really does the job. So what you see, what you've been given to see really is how you judge a project. And in this uh, case study, I think as well, the, the simplicity of it all, but how well it works together, you see like lots of surprises between uh, letters that kind of sit side by side because they're all slightly kind of morphing into different shapes. When they sit side by side, they create different negative spaces. So it's a typeface that kind of leaves a lot of room for surprise. Uh, but it's also a typeface that makes you think about beauty. What is beauty, right? In, in typography, but also what is our standards of beauty? So the subject as well, although we're not, we're judging typography here, but we cannot, but be also, we're human beings. At the end of the day, we're influenced by what they're trying to do and, and how the use of design and typography actually supports uh, how they're doing. So for us, this was um, uh, a lovely project to, to win. And of course, there's, you know, all the big players and the big winners who execute things uh, so brilliantly, but what this did so well, um, is, is actually work with the letter forms. And you see one image from her case study and you just get, get what she's trying to do. So, so such a, a sort of focused and sharp use of typography in this brand mark. Um, and, and yeah, it was really, really nice to see it. It just worked so well, simple, and super effective. Um, and that's kind of where, where we, we fought for this project to you know, get through as higher as possible. <laughs> Yeah, because she she's a fashion designer, is that right? So it, it, when you were talking about the beauty, then it's um there's a real relevance to sort of examining that in the in the the face that has been made, yeah. 
as well as because uh, her my understanding is her work her the fashion she makes is it, she's trying to create um clothing for all women of all all sizes and shapes and and that that came through but in quite a playful way is, yeah. is would i be right it wasn't it wasn't too sort of worthy around that it was quite um yeah. quite fun yeah and and also like the variety she talks a lot about she does bespoke pieces for every single body so everybody is different if you go into any room and you look at at the the group of women who are in that room uh we have for too long probably signed up to uh the kind of sort of standardized uh shape that's kind of the accepted shape of beauty and and this conversation that they kind of managed to take so well into the typography in the sense that, you know, if you put the O next to the T, you get a different shape than if you put the, the V next to the A. So um, it's just it's such a kind of clever solution that, is, that was executed so well. And this idea of, of variety and at the same time, like, you know, the care that's gone into building that typeface, uh, how the counters were manipulated in a way where and even the outer shapes, the small animations that you see in their video about how um, the letters morph. They're like our bodies, right? They expand, they contract, they stress. It's it's not it's not controllable. And they managed to kind of convey uh, that feel really well through the type. So uh, we thought, I mean, we looked in our in our work for a lot of like, you know, what's the emotive power of type? So, so lots of conversations around legibility, you know, it's functional if it's legible, but if it's meant to be functional, some, some pieces that were awarded were not necessarily fully legible, but they just uh, carried the emotion behind a certain project. And for us, that's really interesting in the way it's done. And this is one of these projects that actually carries a lot of emotion uh, in, in, in very simple ways in the typography. And, and this is where the inventiveness uh, lives in, in that project. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, they've done a brilliant job. Yeah. Very good. Um, would you say, and maybe this is a question we can all discuss really, um, but uh, would you say that brands r- recognize enough the, v- the value of typography and type? Because that example you gave there, that it's, it, it feels what works for me with that project, especially is this kind of big link between what the meaning of the brand is and then that carrying through and the type really being very thoughtfully thoughtfully done. I mean, do you, do you feel this is, that brands do this enough or that they see the the value of type enough now? I mean, I I work with Arabic and English and I think it depends who, which brand are we talking about? You know, some people do, some people don't. Uh, Some fields as well, as Pooja mentioned, are much more developed, like in terms of, you know, available Arabic typefaces in comparison to English typefaces, you have one for a thousand. So when you come to choose or to pick uh, the the, the field in in, in Latin is much more saturated than it is in, in other uh, areas and um, and sometimes um, sometimes it's a harder conversation to have than let's say I don't know shapes or or color. I think typography is not yet um, the power of of typography in in the expression of brand as opposed to just creating a bespoke typeface, right? So bespoke typeface is a, is one set of an asset kit. But when you're trying to use typography to create something more emotive, uh, it's a harder sell. And it depends really whether you're working with an individual or whether you're working with a committee, or whether you're working with a big brand or a small brand, what, what is, what is I mean, all of these things as well, you can see them through a project. Sometimes you see um, some of the entries. Um, I think there was one entry that was done by a committee, right? So you know you have a committee and then what you end up with in terms of a solution is, the most uh, is the average most common denominator between everybody and it's impossible like we all work in the in the commercial field when you work with these committees it's hard to get anywhere further because you're trying to um kind of find the 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 a moderate solution for everybody i think the advantage of this project is that it had one artist who's the client right so yeah. he took it and ran with it and that makes things i mean i think if it works well you can tell even like on the team, like there's a complete alignment. That's why the project is so coherent. So a lot of times I think the results that that um, people land at are also a reflection of the process um, and, and who's, who's judging the process. And, and in terms of like pushing, um, I mean, we all work with typography. We understand that this is the equivalent of somebody's voice, right? So if you if you don't like the voice, you don't want to hear it. If someone has like a you know an, an unpleasant voice, um, but 
for for brands it depends really where they are in the world and 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 what their understanding of typography is and and also like you know what the landscape looks like around them because it's always comparative uh so yeah yeah, that's very true, isn't it? What we were saying about the Apple project, the Symbols project, as soon as you get projects by, especially if they're by such big players that are done on that level and show that level of care and detail, it, it kind of forces everyone else up um, as well. Yes. Um, Pooja, what, would you, what were your thoughts on this topic? Do you think, do you think uh, clients and brands and are, uh, are doing, giving due recognition to typography? Um, I think what Samar said right now about you know an emotive response. I think one of the projects that we were looking at at the type design jury was uh, an Arabic typeface for user interface, and uh, our jury chair Nadine said something very interesting. She said that when she first started using that typeface, it it felt like finally she could use like her digital device in a typeface that looked good and felt good. So I think when we think of various communities, regions scripts. Um, I think what we see as an emotive experience also changes very drastically. I don't imagine any of us would look at, uh, you know, a UX typeface, an English one, a Latin one on like our mobile phones and think that it has changed our lives uh, or think that it's completely transformed our experience of being online. But, you know, that is not an emotive experience we would have if those were our primary writing systems. But for somebody uh, who lives their life using a different writing system, in this case, Arabic, that emotive response can be extremely moving, even for something as simple as that. So I do think brands have um, a sense. Uh, I don't think they always do as well as they would like. And I think when it comes to, say, India, also like a lot of like smaller businesses probably are simply unable to, you know, afford good typography. Uh, which is not necessarily an issue we talk about enough because it's, you know, obviously a difficult one and a fraught one. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and let's be honest, I don't think, and Ulrike, please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we had a lot of projects from very small players. Uh, when you think back on the projects that we looked at, especially the ones that were these multi-script projects or, you know, projects in other writing systems, because the amount of effort they require, the amount of research they require also then requires a similar financial commitment, which can sometimes only come from, you know, a large company or a large brand. Yeah, that's unfortunately the case of awards, right? So you, you just mm -hmm. have to judge whatever has entered. And often as well, the judging experience, if you don't know the place or you don't know the project itself, like Apple, everybody knows Apple, right? But if you get a project from, I don't know, a student team in, in China, uh, you, you really have to work harder at understanding what they're trying to do and, mm -hmm. and judge it by the images and the, the description they've given you. And that sort of, you know, and I, actually, like, I wanted to make a point about that, like the case studies, everything, whatever you put forward in front of us is is like for, for whoever wants to apply, who doesn't have a team of producers sitting and refining the copy. That's something really to spend time into and, and to think like less is more, give the least amount of, of, of imagery, but make sure that this imagery really speaks to your project and what you're trying to do, because that helps us judge it as well. Ulrika, what are your thoughts on this? Were there things, we've talked about uh, it being quite dominated by the bigger names, but were there other things you felt were underrepresented this year that you're seeing in the in the real world, not just the jury world, that, that you didn't feel were coming through in the awards, or was it a pretty good representation of where the industry's at? I think it was a good representation, and it was also interesting because for us to see all this entries because then you can also see, okay, that's probably the next trend because there are a lot of entries, for example, that had like different, so each letter had a different style. So this, I don't know, is there a name for that? I actually- I don't know, they were kind of like, like an anthology, like each letter followed a different style. So- Yeah, so, so a mixture of different- has of some kind, yeah. A lot of fonts mixed into one font, so then yeah, that's title, probably the description. <laughs> every letter has like a super different um, um, aspect or a super different um, design. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably also 
represents the world we live in. <laughs> so, um, and a lot of experiments, a lot of experimental typefaces, so not just text typefaces uh, that everyone thinks is the master discipline, but it was like a lot of uh, experiments and um, like also illustration, more illustration fonts and um, yeah, it was uh, super interesting to see all these different entries and to like to be to to get the awareness. Okay, it's not just text typefaces or um, script typefaces and uh, and writing typefaces, but there's more. Um, and people are really exploring what what is possible also with uh, um, type design because I think um, type design got a little bit of a trend in the last years, and more people are now uh, like uh, diving into this adventure of designing type. And I think you that you can see that in the entries that that there are more people. Um, experimenting with type and I think this uh, uh, on the other hand also to answer the uh, one of the previous question also gives more awareness to to the design agencies who use fonts that uh, that they see now more typefaces more versatile typefaces and also recognize oh they're actually people designing these fonts so they're not just <laughs> growing on trees and, uh, you can actually ask people to customize a typeface and to make it work for uh, for a specific um, project and I think this is something that's happened in the last years to, to give more awareness on typography and um, typeface design. Very good. We, we're going to have to close in a minute. I thought we'd just end on, on a, one quick question to all of you that it, I feel the answer to this is, is uh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, if that's, the, <laughs> I'll ask the question first, but I was going to ask whether it felt like um, you felt encouraged by the kind of state of the uh, type design world doing these panels and it feels like from the conversation we're having here there's a lot to be excited about sort of new voices new approaches a lot of uh, new ideas um, but would you would you agree with that do you feel that, that there's a, a lot of development happening and exciting things happening in type or we could uh, you, you you've finished the list yeah yeah I already answered that actually before <laughs> so to see so many different um, playful um, type designs that um, yeah I'm I wanted to get back to my desk and <laughs> also do type again. Um, but yeah, it was also like to see so many different things, but also again, as I said before, to see now finally more different scripts and not only that. And that was yeah. super nice to see. Very good. Pluja, would you agree that things are looking good? Yeah, absolutely. I think the fact that we didn't end up awarding any Latin typefaces, while it took, it took us by surprise, I think it definitely made us feel that like how I mean it was an indication of how much things are changing and I think we all felt that was a very positive thing and to just pick up on what Ulrika said I think it was also really nice to see people look at type to also be like a tool of play and not just as something which is um, unnecessarily serious which doesn't mean that text typefaces don't have their place in the world but I think there is some amount of sometimes snobbery involved in putting them on a pedestal while you know treating everything else as unimportant and I think the group of projects we received this year kind of shattered that kind of uh, point of view, which I think is very encouraging. Yeah, very good. Samar, would you agree from, from what you saw in your jury that um, it lots to look forward to? Definitely. And and I think also what what seems to be done differently in the in the last few years is that we have made space to see variety as well. I don't know what it was like 10 years ago. I didn't judge the type of words at about that time. But this year I was really struck by how diverse the, the jury was. And that sends out a message that we are making space for variety and we are making space for for a less centralized view of the world. You know, Latin is not it's it's actually as colored and as as wide as people and that that already is a great start like if we make space more people will apply next year we will get to see more interesting stuff we'll get to see how uh, how every single script is advancing and developing and what are the new experiments and that makes for sure for a much more kind of rich and and um, colorful um, uh, and playful sort of experience for us as judges to do this so yes definitely Oh, well, that's great. Thank you all for, for talking to us. I think it's really interesting. It sounds actually fascinating, everything that you saw and, and the ideas that were coming through. So lots to be excited about. Um, but yeah, thanks for talking through it with me today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.